Hello guys, long time no see. Welcome back to more um, microcontrollers, um, programming and hardware implementation. Um, we're going to go ahead and start in on our new series. Hopefully you guys caught my update video that talked about what we're going to be playing with next, uh, which uh, we're going to be messing with some ARM processors. I know we're getting away from the uh, microchip stuff, but hey, there's a lot of different uh, processors out there, so we might as well start getting a taste of of all of them. Um, today, what we're going to be doing, I do have a couple corrections to make. Um, one of uh, my viewers uh, pointed these out to me, and I think it was just because I was rolling through that video really fast when I was doing the update video, but this is uh, the M0 um, Cortex uh, Micro is what this one is going to be. Um, this is the actual guide for it. So it's the STM 32F0 Discovery Board. If you guys uh, haven't looked at these, I suggest uh, taking a peek at one of these. These are very, very cool. Um, it's fairly cheap to um, right uh, under $10. Uh, so very, very affordable. Very easy to get a hold of. DigiKey has them. I think Newark, Mauser, pretty much everybody carries these. <laughs> and like I said, for under ten dollars, they do quite a bit. For one, um, you get one of the ARM processors. You get the STM thirty two F zero fifty one R eight T six, which is a thirty two bit ARM Cortex microcontroller. You also get um, this thing that they're talking about. This ST Link V two. This is actually pretty cool. It's basically a programmer that you get on board with this and that's what this other chip is. I don't know if you can see my cursor but that's what this this chip if you look at my cursor here um, right here if we go right over that's that first chip um, the second chip is the actual chip that we're playing with that we're programming and and uh, messing with but the, the programmer portion is this top half piece now what makes this so cool is that not only will it program the onboard uh, STM 32F051R uh, processor that's on board, you can remove uh, these jumper pins. I'll show you in a minute. And this SWD, I don't know if you can see my cursor. I should have picked out. Maybe I can hand tool. That shows up a little easier. See this SWD pin out right here? That's actually for external. You can use this as a programmer for external chips. It doesn't have to be used as this. All you do is remove these little jumpers that are right here on the board and then you can actually take this and plug it into maybe some other board that you have a processor on, uh, one of these ARM processors on, and this will program that price so it acts as a programmer. So not only are you getting a dev kit where you get to uh, one of the ARM processors from ST Microelectronics and you get to play with it, you also get a fully functional programmer and again, like I said, for under under ten dollars, it's pretty pretty darn good deal. It's it's just great all the way around. So, if you haven't picked one of these up and you're thinking about, you're curious about ARM processors and wanting to play with them, I suggest this be a definite starting point because this little kit has been really cool. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into it a little bit. This will be the hard like I normally do the hardware video. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of page down here and kind of flip through this for you guys. Um, this is basically the all this, oh by the way, um, all these um, this documents and a lot of these documents I'm going to be showing you are available at ST's uh, website. Right here is the web, web address. I'll also put a link in the description. But um, is st.com forward slash stm32f0 discovery. And that will take you to their website that's just for this little dev kit and you can uh, flip through all the documentation and download all of the stuff that I'm showing you right now. So anyway, um, to show you the hardware layout, basically yeah, you've got this embedded ST-Link deal and then you have the processor and some I.O. You've got uh, a reset button, uh, you've got some LEDs, and then you've also got a, uh, a just a regular push button that goes to regular I.O. So you got basically hardware reset and a push button and a couple of LEDs and then it brings also all the rest of the I.O. out to the headers. This one's pretty cool. Um, I think they have, see here's them showing you kind of the sections. Here's the ST-Link section of the board and then here's the other piece. And so there's your two buttons and then you've got a couple LEDs 
and whatnot. Let's go on down. Let me flip over. And they've got some jumpers for if you want to add external crystal clocks and things and want to play with that. They've got some solder jumpers that you can make and whatnot. Uh, it tells you about that. Okay, here we go. Here's kind of the block diagram of the processor that's on there. It's a pretty cool processor. It's pretty intense. Let me zoom in a little bit. You've got um, you've got one, two, three, four, five ports. You've got five ports of GPIO. So that's basically your general purpose input output registers. You've got uh, a bunch of those. So that way you can have, um, and each one is 16 port. So you've got 16 um, basically pins per port. So you've got a lot of pins, um, except for these last two ports. They, they don't have the 16 pins, but the first three do. So you got lots of ports to play with. Um, it's got SPI interface. Um, what else does this bad boy have? Uh, it's got UART. It's got two UART ports. Um, it's got two I squared C ports. This even has a HDMI uh, deal with it. It even has it has a whole slew of timers for you to play with. It even has a real time clock in it. It's got um, just all kinds of cool stuff. Basically, everything you can pack into a microcontroller is in this thing. Um, it's got 64 kilobytes of flash, so it's got a nice big uh, memory to put, you know, all to house a program. Um, it's got some SRAM in it. Um, it's got the Cortex M0 processor. It's a 48 megahertz processor, so that's pretty good. That's booking right, right along. Um, I think some of the of the other higher end processors, when you get into the M3 and stuff like that, they can go up to 120 megahertz. I think even farther. I can't remember exactly how far they go. Um, I'm still somewhat kind of new to all the ARM stuff, so you have to bear with me. I'll I may not get everything exactly right, <laughs> just because I'm kind of been new to this. I've been really embedded in microchip stuff, and so now we're branching out into into the ARM world. So anyway, here's the the ST Link um, portion of it. Um, where it's going to talk about um, using the ST-Link. Uh, this shows you the CN2 jumpers on, ST-Link functions, you know, enabled for board programming. That's the default. That means it will program the chip that's on board. If you remove them, then it is enabled through, it is enabled for application through external CN3 connector. So that means external programming of other devices. And here's where it shows you those little connectors. It shows you the SD connector. So yeah, you just remove, if you want to program the discovery, then both are in place. And that's what these two white marks mean. You have to put both in place to program the discovery. If you want to just use it as an external, an ST-Link programmer, you just remove these two and then you get a programmer. So pretty darn cool. And then here's the pinout for um, if you want to use it as an external programmer to program you know, whatever. Um, it gives you the pin out so that you can hook it up. So pretty cool. That's basically, um, I don't know, kind of it. That's for the manual. The manual gives you also a rundown um, of all the solder bridges, what those are, what they do. Um, gives you a rundown of all the different connectors, pin outs, where everything is. So that's a good thing to use to familiarize yourself with what's on the board and you know how what what you have to use. You know what what do you have to use? Um, the easiest way I find to look at. See, they even give you how it's bust and connected together and all that. What I find the easiest is to just look at the schematics. And so here we go. Here's the schematics for this little piece. This is the first schematic is just kind of an overview, kind of a block diagram representation of everything. Um, if you go down to the first page of actual schematic here. This is going to show you the programmer. And this is how the, this is schematic of the programming portion of it. Now this one uses an STM32F1 uh, processor, which is a little different than the F0. And so uh, they use this as their, as the processor to program with. And um, this is basically your hardware drawing. So I'm not gonna, we're not gonna mess with this, you know, because I mean it's it's in place. 
the way it is. The only thing we might do to change it up would be, you know, remove those jumpers, like I said, to program an external thing. So we're not going to mess with that. What we're going to mess with is what we'd like to know and really study closely is this schematic. This is the schematic of the actual onboard uh, PIC micro. Or PIC micro. See, I'm so used to saying PIC. Um, STM32F0 processor. That's the little arm that's on there that you get to play with. This is the detailed schematic of it. So basically, you just they just pretty much brought all these pins out. Is what they've done. They've just brought it all out to one giant header. There's some pull-up resistors and whatnot. Oh, excuse me, I had a had a yawn that hit me all of a sudden. Um, but for boot, it's kind of like your mem clear, I guess you would say, for your boot pins, also as well as connecting VSS and PDD and all that stuff. They've even got some options. It's right here. It says not fitted. They've got some options for some crystal clock oscillators if you want to try it, experimenting with external oscillators. Uh, they've got a couple pads, you know, landing pads for them uh, on the board as well um, that are not populated. Um, a bunch of other different things. They've got different. Here's some of the solder, solder bridges or whatever they call them. Some of the solder bridges that you can add, um, that you can put together or whatnot, and you'll see all that detailed here. So basically, what we want to look at though, and for our first uh, lesson here, is we're going to look at where our LEDs are, which we've got two of them. We've got one on the PC9 pin, and one on the PC8 pin, and then we want to look at where one of our buttons are. And this one is a reset button, so we won't mess with it. But this one is on PA0, which is a GPIO pin. So we can play with that. And like they're saying, the capacitor isn't fitted, but we don't need that for what we're doing. We just need the rest of the stuff that's put together. But it's already connected up, and everything's put together good, so that's what we'll be using is that piece. And so that's pretty much uh, the hardware section. Uh, pretty straightforward considering that you've got the uh, the dev kit. Dev kits are very very helpful in that sense everything's pretty well done for you. The only thing you need to do is figure out where they put everything. So I will go ahead and post um, some links to uh, ST's website um, so you can get this information and then the next video will dive into the software of this and I don't know I think I may make the software portion of this one, uh, maybe two, if not three, maybe multiple part video, just because there's a lot to the software on these, much, much more than a PIC Micro. A PIC Micro is pretty well, you download the IDE, download a compiler, put them together, and it works. This one, there's a lot more um, to it because you have to set up um, startup files, set up a linker file, set up um, set up the compiler, set up the IDE if you're going to use one, um, set up the programming software, set up, there's there's a lot to it. And so we'll go through it step by step and we'll make our first program which will be like the first program we made in the PIC Micro series which is the Blinky program. We'll make a program that blinks uh, one of these LEDs and uh, the next one will be, we'll probably do another lesson, we'll incorporate the button and just we'll continue on from there and start incorporating things and playing with it so hope you enjoy this section of videos um, I'm excited to get my hands on these arm uh, processors and really get to know them get familiar with them so hopefully you guys will be excited to get your hands on these as well because they they are pretty cool I see them in pretty much every mobile device that's made nowadays has got some sort of an arm processing device in it. So it's fun to get our feet wet and learn s something that really isn't new, but is, I guess, popular. <laughs> anyway, anyway, guys, I've taken enough of your time. Keep coding, have a good time, and remember, it's all for good and fun. Take care now. See you next time.